Okay, so this is the um, intermediate algebra. We're gonna go through all of the problems for the most part that are on your exam two. Remember exam two is gonna be held in class on 920, uh, so September 20th. All right, let's get started. Okay, so remember we need to look for like bases in this case, we have all x's. So what we can do with our problem is we can add the exponents. This is called the product rule. So here you can see we would have x to the 15th. Um, going, I guess, somewhat clockwise, it would depend on where you started. Anyway, the top right corner now, um, what you'll notice is we now have a A and a B. So those are two different bases. So here we would write the problem a little bit nicer. And you would say that the product rule does not apply. All right. For the next one, uh, you just need to know that anytime you take anything to the zero power, you get one out. So in both of these cases, they are one. We have an addition in the middle. So your answer is actually going to be two. Okay. All right. And for the last one, we have the quotient rule. So for the quotient rule, you have to check for like bases, which we have. Um, this problem, you can do two different methods. So I'm gonna show you both of them, okay? You could do K to the five minus 13 and end up with K to the negative eighth. And then know that we don't like negative exponents. So we're gonna bring it over and bring it to the bottom. Okay, that's one option. The other option is to realize that the 13 is, is larger than five. So you know that you're gonna be on the bottom and you would do K to the 13 minus five instead, which would give you one over K to the eighth. Either method, you're ending up in the same place. So just kind of pay attention to what you have available there. All right, so this is the tough guy. This is the, the tough guy that's on your, on your test um, for exponents. So again, there's more than one approach you could take. I'm going to show you the approach that I think is uh, most, I guess I'll say least likely to cause you to have a, any mistakes. Um, so I would, I would say it's the best route for you guys to take. So what I would do is I would leave the first guy alone. I would just rewrite him. 5x cubed. Over y squared. Nope, sorry. Squared. I would leave that alone for the moment. What I would do, though, is change this negative. So to change the outside exponent, if it's a negative, what we're gonna do is we're going to flip the inside fraction. So we're gonna do the reciprocal. So anything that was on the bottom is now gonna be on the top. And anything that was on the top is now gonna be on the bottom, okay? And now that's gonna change that outside exponent to a positive, all right? And we can essentially ignore it because now it's just a, it's, it's normal, it's just a understood one. Uh, the next thing I would do is I would bring in the squ extra squared term, okay? So we would have five squared x cubed squared y squared squared, all right? Then I would move the um, y to the negative three to the bottom because that would help us get rid of another negative exponent. Okay, 
now we'll clean some stuff up. It's gonna be 25 x to the sixth, y to the fourth. Okay, and now it's just about bringing stuff together. So 25 over three stays. We can't do anything about that. X to the sixth is larger than X to the fourth. So we're gonna bring it up. So X to the sixth minus four. And then we have like bases on the bottom for our Y's. So it's gonna be Y to the four plus three. Okay, that's gonna bring those two together. So it's gonna be 25 X squared over three Y to the seventh. All right, that is that problem. All right, next. Okay, so some of this needs modified for your exam. You do not have to do this part. Can I get it a little bit heavier? Yeah, that kind of works. All right. And then for this one, you just worry about something like that. Okay. So let's do some problems. All right. Um, what we're doing here is we're just going to rewrite this function and put it into uh, function notation. So your first step is to get it into y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. So we'll subtract 2x on both sides. And we just replace the y with the f of x. And then everything else stays the same. Okay, that's it for that one. Um, for this one, so normally we see it as f of x. That's what we're given, just like with here. But now we have f of 5. So everywhere we have an x, we're going to put a 5. Since it didn't have a parenthesis set in the beginning, I'm assuming that that negative is out front. So you could get to negative three. What I would really like on your test is your point. So your point here would be five, oops, sorry, five, negative three. All right, and the last one, I cannot recall the actual letters that you have to use. Like, I don't think it's a G of X, I forget what it is, and I don't think it's A, but you'll get the idea. What we're gonna do is G of A, so wherever there's an X, we're now gonna put an A. And that's all you have to do for that one. Okay, all right, let's keep it moving. Okay, so what you have to take away from this one is that for this problem here, you only have three points on your test. They give you three points 
labeled on a graph that you have to identify. So, but regardless, what we need to find here is your domain. Remember domain goes with your X's. So 15, 20, six and negative one. And then we have our range. Range goes with Y's. You don't have to include repeated Y's or repeated X's. Um, you just need to know that they're there. And we don't care if we have repeated Y's, but we can't have any repeated X's. In this case, we don't have any repeated X's. So we would classify this as a function. Okay. You can also see if it passes the vertical line test. So here, All right, so for A, if you did the vertical line test here, you can see it would fail. So, so relation, or you could say not function. Okay, but you still need to say what the domain and range are. So for the domain here, you're looking at all possible X values. Um, so kind of in this direction. And you can see that we start with, very sorry about that guys. I keep having a bad pen night, even though I like writing with the pen more than the other ones. Um, so we're gonna go from negative four, including negative four to positive infinity. And then our range is actually the entire set. And you can see that because here it shows you that the arrowheads continue. Anytime you have arrowheads continuing like that, you're going to have a situation where you have all real numbers included. Okay. For this one down here, you can see that it's, it's kind of normal. You, you pass the vertical line test. So this is a function. So your domain, in this case, you're looking at your X's. Here you can see it continues. So domain is gonna be all real, real numbers. Whereas the range, the range you can see, it only goes up so high and that height is four. So the range, actually goes from negative infinity and then stops at positive four, okay? All right, so remember um, there's a lot going on with this test. If you do not have to solve something, you just need to get it into y equals mx plus b. So the steps for this one are to get both into yx plus b form, and then classify solutions, okay? So here we go.
Okay. And this situation, we have the same line. So that means that every possible place you could be is going to be a solution on this line. So then that means infinitely many solutions. And it's technically a consistent function, but I don't think you need to know that. There you go. OK, same, same setup. So we'll write the steps out again. Both need to be in y equals mx plus b. Then classify solutions. Okay. So these have opposite slope, recipro opposite slope recipro reciprocals. They have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Sorry, that was a tongue twister for me to get out. So what this means is we have perpendicular lines so that means one solution only and that that solution would be the point of intersection All right, same, same set of steps. Okay, so our solution here is parallel lines because they have the same slopes but opposite or different slope inner, or inner, oh my goodness, guys, I'm so tired. Same slopes, opposite or different, rather not opposite, but different y-intercepts. So parallel lines means no solutions or the null set or the empty set.
Okay. All right. We're finally done with those style of questions. On to the next one. We want to check that this point is a solution. To do that, when we have a system, okay, to do that, when we have a system, we have to plug it into both equations. Okay, so let's do the first one. So we have x minus 5y equals 11. Now we're going to plug in 6, negative 1. So where there's an x, we're going to put a 6. Where there's a y, we're putting negative 1. So 6 minus 5 times negative 1, does that equal 11? Well, that would be 6 plus 5. So 11 equals 11. So that's true. But we only tested one of the problems. So now we need to test the other equation. Okay. So we would have 3x plus 8y equal to 10. We want to plug in the same point. So everywhere there's an X, we're gonna put in six. Everywhere there's a Y, we're putting in negative one. Does that equal 10? Well, that would be 18 minus eight. You can see it does in fact equal 10. Again, we have a true statement. So we would say, yes, Oh my goodness. Is a solution for this system. Okay. Oh my goodness. I wish that I, I'm going to try and see if I can disable that button, but I can't do it right now. Okay, what we're going to do next is solve by graphing. All right, so here's our steps. Get both into y equals mx plus b. Graph equation one, graph equation two, check solution. Okay, so let's get them into y equals mx plus b first. I think your graphing question is nicer than mine. That's kind of gross. Probably going to use Desmos, not going to lie. So this is equation one. So then equation two, is y equals five force x minus three force. Okay. All right, 
Let's just do what I would have you guys do on your test, which is a very rough sketch. Eight, eight over five. Let's, let's get the decimal equivalents just to help us out. So two fifths here is Not that I want to really see this, you guys use this like this. Um, I don't really like seeing the decimals, but I think it'll help us with the graphing. Okay, and then Okay, so um, doesn't matter to me which one we graph first. So let's do negative point negative one point six. And then four tenths. Uh, well, that's two fifths. So we would go up to which is basically right above zero and to the right five. So like, kind of like right there. This is just a really ugly one to graph guys. I apologize. This is 2x minus 5y equals zero, or equals eight, sorry. Yeah, you guys don't have to do one nearly as gross as this. Um, and then we're going to go to negative 0.75. And then again, we're looking here. So we're gonna go up. up five. So that'd be it like and then to the right four. And then that also would mean that we would go down. Okay, so that's what it looks like when we graph it by hand. What we need to figure out is this point right here. And like I said, you guys would have a much nicer approach to this on, on your graph paper and on the fact that um, your test question's nicer. So let's look at Desmos real quick for this. And we need to get the question. So let me write it down real quick. We're going to use the one with fractions. So y equals 2 fifths x minus 8 fifths. And y equals 5 fourths x minus 3 fourths. OK. All right, so y equals two fifths.
Okay, there's that one. And then y equals, you guys can see why I made yours a lot easier because you won't need to use Desmos to help you graph it. Okay, so that nice point is negative one negative two, that's what we would say this is. And that makes sense, negative one, it is underneath this negative 1.6, so negative one, negative two. So your solution is negative one, negative two. And in theory, if we went back and checked that, so let's do a check. Negative one times two is a negative two. Negative five times negative two is a 10. 10 minus two is eight. So that checks. Negative one times five is a negative five. A negative four times a negative two is a positive eight. Eight minus five is three. Okay, so it checks. Really long problem. You guys only have to do one of them in that manner so again i think yours is much easier all right the steps for substitution look for variable with plus or minus one substitute um or solve if needed Sub sit shoot into opposite equation. Solve then plug back into original. Okay, so let's do that so you know what I'm talking about. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna solve for this y. So two x minus y equals 11. The reason why I picked that y is because it has a negative one with it. So we're gonna make it nice and just make it a normal y. In other words, we solved for it. Okay, now I'm gonna plug this into the second equation up here. So we'll have four X plus nine times what we know now is Y equals 11. So four X plus 18 X minus 99 equals 11 plus 99 plus 99. So 22 X equals 99 plus 11 is 110. Divide by 22, divide by 22. And I think that is going to be five. 
So x equals five. Now that we have x equals five, we have to plug it back in and find y. So y equals two times five minus 11. So y equals negative one. So then your answer here, your solution is five negative one. And then what you would have to do is go back and check. Okay, so let's check it. So for every place we have an X, we're putting a five. So four times five plus nine times negative one, does that equal 11? Well, that would be 20 minus nine, which is 11 equals 11. So that one works. We plug it in again. Oops. Okay, so it works in each of the cases. So that is our solution there. Okay, last set of questions dealing with um, solving systems that are just regular. The last ones are all word problems. So the steps are uh, determine which variable to cancel out. Multiply if needed. Plug in to either. Okay, so let's let's eliminate the y's because they already have opposite uh, signs. So let's just multiply top by two and the bottom by five. Okay, so the first one is going to be two times four x will give us eight x. Two times five y will give us a positive ten y. And then 11 times 2 will give us 22. Okay. Now we have to do the bottom one. 5 times 3x will give us 15x. Negative 2 times 5 will give us negative 10y. And 5 times negative 9 will give us a negative 45. The Tens cancel out, so the y's are gone. We have 23x equal to negative 23. So x is equal to negative one. Now to find y, we can plug into either of the other ones. Doesn't really matter, I'm just gonna pick the top one. So four times one, negative one, plus five y equals 11. Okay, so y equals three.
So that would mean your solution is negative one, three, Okay, and now we have to check it. So let's check. Okay, so four times negative one plus five times three, does that equal 11? That would be negative four plus 15. So 11 equals 11 checks. All right, and then we have three times negative one minus two times three. Does that equal a negative nine? It would be negative three minus six. So that yes, we have negative nine equals negative nine. Okay, so all of them check out. Okay. All right, nearly done. Sorry this review took so long. It's just a lot of pieces that you have to do. All right, so the length of a rectangular field is five meters more than the width. So that's the more than is what's missing here, more than the width. So um one of our equations is going to be length equals to five more than the width so five plus w your perimeter is the perimeter for a rectangle which is 2w plus 2l or you could do w plus w plus l plus l however you wanted to do it so that is your system when we have some things that help us with your system so like we know that we can plug in 70 for the perimeter. So let's do that. 70 equals 2w plus, we know what L is. So two times five plus w. All right, so all we've done here is sub in 70 for the perimeter and what we know for L. We're gonna subtract 10 on both sides. So we had 60 equal to four. 2w and 2w gives us 4w. Uh, 60 divided by 4, I believe, is 15. That is correct. So w is 15 meters. You need your you need your uh, units when you do application problems, and then your length is just five more than that. So that would be 20 meters. If you wanted to do a check, length uh, equals five plus 15, does 15 equal, does that equal 20? 20 equals 20, so that checks. Second one, Perimeter is 70, two times 15 plus two times 20. That'll give us 30 plus 40. So 70 equals 70, that checks. So they work. All right. Okay, here is the money problem. We need to find the number of tickets sold for each type. We're gonna say that the adults are gonna be X. Okay. 
and that y is going to be the kids. Okay. We know that there are 723 tickets sold. So the first equation is going to be x plus y equals 723 tickets. The second thing we know is that 950 is the cost for the adult and $4 is for the kids. So adult goes with x. $4 goes with y. And then our total. So let's highlight some of that stuff, OK? That's not how I wanted to highlight. OK. All right. And then the total is 4, 6, 9, 0. Point five zero. Okay, you have a couple of options here. You could do substitution. You could try to eliminate. So let's let's use elimination for this one, and let's eliminate the y. So let's multiply this one by negative four. So that's going to give us minus four x. Minus 4y equals minus 723 times 4 will give us 2892. The 4s cancel, so the y's cancel. Then we have 950 minus 4 will give us 550x. 4690.50. Will give us 179850. Divide both sides by 550. And we get X to be 327 tickets, adult tickets, 327. Adult tickets. Okay, that's, that's one of them. Now to find the other one, we're just going to subtract from the total. Okay, so to find y, we're just going to take 723 No, we're using this one. We're going to take x of 327 So y equals Three hundred ninety six tickets. Again, you could check. For the sake of time, I'm not going to. If you wanted to write this one as a point, you could, but I'm okay with it like this. The point would be three hundred and twenty seven. comma 396. But again, not, not really needed here. All right, last one. This is my solution problem. I highly recommend that you use the little beakers that I draw out. So for this one, we would have 75% solution. So that would be 0.75. And then we're going to also have 63 or 55%. I believe that's what's over here. This, what you're missing there is a right here is a 55%. 
So that's going to be a little bit less. And then 63 is kind of in the middle. All right, and then we just kind of do this. So we know there's some unknown amount in liters of the 75%. We know there's some unknown amount of Y in liters for the 55%. And we know that there are 70 liters of the outcome. And this just kind of helps you, okay? So to make, your, to make your system, you add across and equal it. So X plus Y equal to 70 liters. And then you, then you go multiply down and add across. So multiply. and then add across. So 0.75x plus 0.55y equals now 70 times 0.63, which I believe was 441. Yes, it's equal to 441. All right. Um, if you need, if you wanted, we could do let X equal 75% and Y equal 55%. Okay. All right. Now we have to solve again. I would, let's use a substitution here. Let's solve for, let's solve for, uh, let's just solve for X here. So we're gonna subtract Y. So X is gonna be, let's write it somewhere else so you guys don't get confused. Let's do X plus Y equal to 70. We'll subtract Y. And we'll have x equal to 70 minus y. And then let's plug it into what we know. So 0.75 is now going to be 70 minus y plus 0.55y equal to 44.1. Let's distribute. So 75 to, or 70 times 0.75 is 52.5. I'm going to subtract 52.5 on both sides. That's going to give us a negative 0.20y equals 44.1 minus 52.5 will give us a minus 8.4. Stop it. And that gives us X equal to 42 liters of 75% solution. All right, to find the Y, we just take 70 minus 42, and that gives us 28. So you can do it over here. And if you really wanted to check that, you could. But I am going to leave this for the review at the moment. If you need anything, please email me. I'm going to be emailing out uh, a reminder about the um, Q&A tomorrow. So I'm going to be emailing you guys now.
All right. See everybody in class on Monday and look for your uploads. Bye, guys.